Hello everybody at Brimbank Library. I'm Ursula Dubasarski and I write books for children. I'm also the Australian Children's Laureate, which is why I'm wearing this uh, laurel crown on my head and it's also why I've got my friend there, the Laureate Magpie. And my job as Children's Laureate is to talk to as many children as possible about what a wonderful thing reading is and about what brilliant things books are and especially about what fabulous things libraries are. And uh, I hope everybody listening to me now is a member of Brimbank Library. You know you can sign up and get your own library card. Whoops, upside down. You can get your own library card with your name on it. And that means you can borrow as many books as you like with that library card. So you will never run out of books and you'll definitely find books in the library that you'll want to read because there's so many books there. Now what I'm going to do today actually is I am going to read you one of the stories I've written and I'm also going to talk to you a little bit about how I came to write it and some of the things that kind of happened in the writing of the story and also in the drawing of the pictures. Now this book is called Too Many Elephants in This House and you can see on the front of the book it's got my name there, Ursula Dubasarsky, but it's got someone else's name as well, Andrew Joyner. And Andrew Joyner is the person who drew the pictures for the book. So I'm an author, that means I write the words in a book and the illustrator is the person who draws the pictures. So I'll be able to tell you a little bit about some of the things Andrew told me about how he drew the pictures as well. Now I wonder if anybody here has got an elephant toy. Let me show you mine. Oh, I've got a really big one. Oh my! That's a big beautiful elephant. Um, this belonged to one of my children. I've got three children and this belonged to my middle son whose name was Dover. This was a big elephant toy that he had. But actually all three of my children, i try and sit the elephant there, see if we can listen. All three of my children had toy elephants of one kind or another and even when I was a little girl, I remember I had a plastic uh, toy elephant like a money box that you put money in and I think probably quite a few of you listening today at some time or another have had some sort of elephant toy. I think children love elephants and they're such a great shape aren't they? Look at that. Actually Andrew who drew the pictures of my book said they're a wonderful shape to draw. He loves drawing elephants. Now this book you can see here, it's called Too Many Elephants in This House. And the way I got the idea for this story was actually one day when I was walking around my house cleaning up after my three children who left a bit of a mess around the place and I was picking up all these toy elephants and I just said out loud, there's too many elephants in this house. And then I thought to myself, oh, that could be a good title for a story, Ursula. And then I started thinking about what sort of story I could write about someone who had too many elephants in the house. But I started thinking, this is what happens when you write a story. You, your imagination starts working. I started thinking about how what, what it would be like if instead of toy elephants, they were real elephants in the house. So you can see here, here is the main character. That's a little boy called Eric. And the book is actually almost like a house, isn't it? Here's the roof. There's the front door. There are two windows. And if you look inside the windows, there's elephants and then when you turn the book round the back that's like the back view of the house and there's some the back view of those elephants. So this really is a house filled 
with elephants. I'm going to have to put my great big elephant on a seat over there because I'm afraid it's going to fall over while I read the story. Now, Andrew, who drew the pictures, he said to me he liked the idea of when you open up the book that it's almost like going inside the house. Uh, and what do you see? A lot of elephants. In fact, there's so many. Every time I count them, maybe you can count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Can I tell you, every time I count those elephants, there is a different number. <laughs> that is a lot of squishy elephants. Andrew told me it was like drawing elephants made out of Play-Doh. You could squish them into all different shapes. And then we turn the page again. Here's the title page with the title, Too Many Elephants in This House. And there's the little boy, oh, Eric. There's my name and Andrew's name. Here it says pictures by. That's the illustrator. And there is an elephant trunk. So we open up the book. In Eric's house, there were too many elephants. Now, the thing about the beginning of this story is it's a bit of a trick, you know, because when you look at it, you think, well, I can't see too many elephants there. There's Eric sitting on a chair. He's reading a book about elephants, and it looks like he's drawn a picture of an elephant. But that's not too many, is it? Wait till you turn the page. You'll see that it was a trick. You see that? There's the chair. There's the lampshade, there's the drawing. Let's go back to that first page. Can you see the little bits of grey on either side? Because when you look at that picture, you think Eric's just sitting on a carpet on the floor, but actually he is sitting on the back of a giant elephant. If you have another look at the picture, you'll see that some of these things looks like Andrew has cut out a picture of a chair and stuck it there. And the same with the lampshade, and actually that's what he has done. Andrew loves sticking pictures of things on his pictures. I bet you know the word for that. I used to love doing this at school. Collage. You know when you cut out pictures from a magazine or something and then you stick it on your picture and Andrew loves adding bits of collage to all his pictures so you have a bit of a look out for that as we're turning the pages but there we go there was an elephant in the living room there was an elephant in the kitchen <laughs> now that is a giant elephant Remember how I told you how Andrew loves drawing elephants? Well, he told me, this is a tip in case you want to draw an elephant. He told me that what he did every time he had to draw an elephant was he would get up out of his chair and pretend that he was an elephant. He'd walk around the house pretending he had a big trunk or waving his arms and being an elephant. And he said he went into the kitchen and he stood next to the fridge. He's quite tall, not as big as an elephant, but he's tall. And he stood next to the fridge and he thought, oh, I wonder what an elephant would do here. And he thought, oh, I think the elephant might lean their elbow on the fridge. And then he went back down to his desk and he drew the picture of an elephant because he said it helps him when he's drawing to really feel like what he's drawing. So if you want to draw an elephant or any other animal, that's something to bear in mind. You should pretend to be the animal and really feel like maybe you want to draw a cat 
You could pretend to be a cat. Meow. And you could start to feel what it was like to be a cat. And that feeling would come into your drawing. Okay. I've got to think of all the rooms in the house. We've had the living room and we've had the kitchen. That's how I write this story, really. I imagine going into the house and going into each of the rooms and thinking what could be going on in there if you had a house full of elephants. I love this drawing. There was, this is the drawing at the top. I hope you can see it all. Just look at the top with the carpet. It says there was an elephant in the hallway. I think they're playing chasings. There was an elephant in the bathroom. You can't see the whole elephant, can you? You can only see the trunk. That elephant is swimming underwater. <laughs> Eric looks pretty happy. There was even an elephant in Eric's bedroom. Look at that. It's like when I was a little girl, I had a cat called Ricky. And Ricky used to sleep on my bed like that. But Ricky was not very big. Ricky was this big. <laughs> Not quite like having an elephant. So there was even an elephant in Eric's bedroom and sometimes a whole herd of them. Look at those elephants. Oh my goodness, what are they doing? They are having Pillow fight. I hate pillow fights. I get really scared I'm going to be hit on the head. But it looks like Eric loves a good pillow fight. Now, remember what I was talking about before with the collage, sticking things onto the picture? Well, I want you to have a look closely here. When I saw this picture, I couldn't help noticing there were so many... Oh, where are they? There we go. There's some more. There were so many drawings of little white feathers coming out of the pillows. And I said to Andrew, wow, how did you draw all those feathers? That must have taken like days and days because they're all sort of perfect looking. And he told me a secret that I'm now going to tell to you. Those are actually real feathers. What he did was he went out into the backyard. He lives in South Australia. He went out into the backyard and there were a whole lot of corellas up in the tree. It's a kind of white, a kind of parrot that drops lots of feathers. And he picked up all the corella feathers from the ground and then he went back to the drawing he'd done of Eric having a pillow fight and he stuck all of these feathers all over the picture. So those feathers look real because they are real. Here's some more feathers. One day, Eric's mother said, can you see a hand? There's a hand. There are too many elephants in this house. They've got to go. Mm. Now have a look here. Here's Eric looking very sad, isn't he? And so do the elephants. And you see how the writing here is in big black writing. Almost like somebody's scribbled on it with a texture. And then you have this writing here, which is just ordinary writing. And most of the book is in ordinary writing. But there are three times, three times in the book, where you're going to see this big black writing and when you see that big black writing, you will know that Eric is having a very big feeling. And here he's saying to his mother, No, cried Eric, not my elephants. Can you all say that together if I count to three with a very big feeling voice? No, not my elephants. Here we go. One, two, three.
three. No, not my elephants. Eric loved his elephants, every single one. Remember the elephant in the living room? The elephant in the living room helped him build towers with his blocks. Wow, that's a crazy tower. Eric looks very happy, doesn't he? That's amazing. <laughs> and the elephant in the kitchen was good at making toast. Now, that would be handy if you were very hungry at breakfast. See how he's got a chef's hat on that elephant. He could play hide and seek with the elephant in the hallway. See how the elephant's closing her eyes and Eric's creeping away to hide. And the elephant in the bathroom always reminded him to brush his teeth. Well, now that's a good elephant. Remember the elephants in the bedroom? Oh my goodness. And the elephants in the bedroom sang him to sleep at night. Now look at that. You know, when I wrote those words, because I write all the words before Andy drew the pictures. So I wrote the words and then I gave them to Andrew to draw the pictures. And when I wrote those words, I think I was imagining the elephant singing a lovely, quiet la 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 lullaby, and that Eric would be fast asleep. But when Andrew drew it, he imagined these crazy, noisy, happy, laughing elephants singing at the top of their voices. And look, Eric looks very happy and not very sleepy. I think what Andrew thought of was much better. Here comes mum again. That's me. <laughs> it's no good, Eric's mother said. I can't move for all these elephants. And in fact, she can't even get in the door. If you look very closely, you can just see her little fingers there, sort of desperately around the door. She can't even get in. Dear, oh dear. Here we come to another time with the big black writing and the big feeling. And he's looking worried, isn't he? And the writing says, but what could Eric do? If I count to three, can you all say that in a very big feeling voice? But what could Eric do? What is he going to do? Now, I wonder if anybody knows where in the world elephants come from. Well, actually, before I ask you that, I should ask you where in, the, where, in, in where you live would you go to see an elephant? I'll ask you that first. Where would you go and see an elephant? Exactly. The zoo. And that's what Eric thought. He thought he could take the elephants to the zoo. And look at the elephants, they're so happy, 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 happy. Off we go, off we go to the zoo. But then look what happens. Look at these mean animals in the zoo. Go away, they're saying, we don't want any more elephants in our zoo. And look, Eric is sad and they all look very sad, don't they? Oh dear. So then Eric thought, well, where do elephants come from? And some of them come from Africa. And some of them come from Asia. But he thought of Africa. He thought maybe he could take them to Africa. 
But how would he ever get that many elephants on a plane? I mean, they're pretty big, those elephants. He is pushing them up the stairs. And look, if you look here inside the plane where the pilot should be, there's a big squishy elephant. Hmm. But he had another idea. He thought maybe he could just leave the back gate open at night and let all the elephants escape. <gasps> wow. Now those elephants are having a good time. There's one up in a tree. And look at this one. She's using the um, car as a skateboard. And these two are singing. And this one's eating the garbage out of the garbage bin. Looks like popcorn. And there's another one up the tree. And I think this one's just running away. And oh, Eric looks very worried. He decided he'd better not do that. Finally, he had just the right idea. Now, before I show you this picture, I'm just going to tell you, when I was a little girl, I always wanted a doll's house. I didn't actually have any dolls. I didn't really like dolls, but I used to like sort of stuffed animals, you know, like I had a teddy bear and a, and a sort of blue dog and things like that. And I wanted them to live in a doll's house. But I didn't have one, so what I did is I made one out of something that we had in the house. I wonder who can guess what that something is. He found a very, very, very big box. Now just look at that box. It looks so real, doesn't it? I think you can guess now why it looks so real. That's right, because it is real. Instead of drawing a big box, which Andy said to me he thought it would take too long and would be really boring colouring all that in, so he decided he would get a real box and stick it on the picture. Wow, the elephants look a bit amazed, don't they? They wonder what on earth is going on. He cut a hole in the top for a chimney. He cut a hole in the back for a window and you can see he's doing a bit of painting. And then he cut another hole in the front for a door. Look, elephants, said Eric. The elephants looked. They wondered. It's a house, said Eric, just for you. Of course, an elephant house, just for elephants. Now we're coming to my favourite picture in the whole book. Now I wonder, when you go out maybe, um, you might go out with your family or you might go out with your school or preschool and usually, particularly if you have to cross the road, what does your mum or your teacher tell you to do? Hold hands. So you don't get lost or run over or walk in the wrong direction or something like that. Now, elephants, when they go out for a long walk, they don't have any hands. So they can't hold hands, can they, to stop them getting lost? But I'm going to show you this picture. This is what elephants really do when they go for a big, long walk with each other. Look at that. You can see they hold each other's tails with their trunk. That's how they hang on to each other. And look right at the back of the line. Can you see this one's let go? 
because Andy told me he imagined what it would be like to be at the end of a very, very long line of elephants. And he sort of imagined, I bet this has happened to you when you've been at the end of a long line, you sort of go like that, because you want to see what's going on. So Andy imagined being that elephant. <laughs> one by one, in a long elephant line, all of the elephants went into the elephant house. When the last elephant was inside, Eric shut the door. There's not too many elephants in this house, said Eric. And after that, whenever he wanted to play with the elephants, Eric would just go to the door and shout. We're coming up to the biggest, blackest writing in the whole book. And this is Eric's biggest feeling. But remember before his feelings, he was more worried or sad. This isn't that feeling. This is a very, very, very happy feeling. So I wonder if I count to three, can you all shout together, come on out, elephants? Can you do that? We ready? Put your hands over your ears if you don't like loud voices. Are we ready? One, two, three. Come on out, elephants! <laughs> and out they came, ready for anything and look at these happy elephants look there's one doing a handstand and these two are dancing this one's playing the violin this one's playing the ukulele i think and the banjo and eric is so happy and this one's running like a puppy they are just the happiest elephants i've ever seen now there's just one more picture in this story. One more page, one more picture, and no words. This is how the story ends. And I have to say to you, it's a bit of a mystery. I've written lots of books. I've written about 60 books. And almost every single one of them is a bit of a mystery. I like mysteries. I like it when you get to the end of the book and you're wondering what really happened in that story. That's the sort of story I like. And this is a bit like that. Have a look at this. This is how the story ends. Now I wonder who's got an idea about what's happened in the story. I have to say to you, there is no right or wrong answer. I actually don't really know. But I always love it when children come up with ideas. One child said to me that she thought that maybe inside the box was some elephant food. And someone else said they thought maybe inside the box was a baby elephant. Somebody else said that maybe inside the box is, is toy elephants. And maybe the whole story was just Eric's imagination. Was him pretending that the elephants were real and maybe they weren't real. Could be. And another person said, thought this was an amazing idea, that maybe Eric has turned into a giant and he's carrying this giant box because now he's really big too, like an elephant. Mm. Well, I have to say to you that Andrew Joyner, who drew the pictures, he said to me, you know what I think, Ursula? I think sometimes when you open up that box, this 
is what you see inside. <laughs> A big box of squished up elephants with a little squished up Eric as well. And that is the end of the story. Now I wonder if you like colouring in and if you like counting, you might be able to find on the internet this special count and colouring in sheet that Andrew Joyner has drawn specially for this book. And you can see it's a big picture of all these squishy elephants that you could colour in. You can find it on my website. If you look for my name, Ursula Dubasarski, you'll be able to find my website. And also, you can find it on the Australian Children's Laureate website, which has lots of wonderful elephant things to do, but also lots of other fantastic activities for children, especially for children. Uh, writing and colouring and cutting, all sorts of activities and lots of other things to look at. There's actually a really wonderful Auslan reading of Too Many Elephants in This House. So that's in sign language. It's really beautiful, worth, worth having a look at. So that is the colouring in sheet where you colour in the elephants and then you count them and then you, there's a special space where you can write down how many you think are there. Mm. Um, you'll probably all get a different answer because they're so wiggly. There's another colouring in sheet that I really love because this one is make your own elephant jigsaw puzzle. Look at that. So what you do with this one is you colour it in and then you stick it on some cardboard and then you cut around the big black lines to make all the different shapes of your very own elephant jigsaw. I like that one. And finally, are you ready for this? Ready magpie? This is exciting. Hope I've got it the right way up. Here we go. That's me pretending I'm an elephant with this fantastic elephant mask. Look at that. You can cut it out. This one you don't even need to colour in, but you can if you want. And then you cut out two little bits for your eyes. And round here you could put some string or some elastic. It's a bit like a mask, isn't it? To stop you <coughs> coughing on people. Um, this mask even goes over your whole face. And you can make one for yourself, you can make one for your mum or dad or your auntie or your brothers and sisters or your cousins or, or whoever you like. You could make a big herd of elephants. You just have to print them out on a printer and um, then they're yours to do with whatever you like. And as I said, you'll find them either on my website or on the Children's Laureate uh, website. Now, Elephant down here has been sitting very patiently really should be the star of the show this elephant elephant is what my son Dobie used to call him elephant good old elephant so elephant did you enjoy the show <laughs> the reading yes yes he's very obedient he did enjoy it and i hope magpie enjoyed it as well and just to remind you look at that library card if you haven't already got a library card make sure you get one before you go home today, that you go and see the librarian and the librarian will show you what you have to do. Um, doesn't cost you money, you just write your name down and all your details and then you'll get a library card with your own name on it for you to borrow books. So thank you very much for listening to me. It's been fantastic. And um, I have to say, I wish you lots of happy reading, lots of happy library visits and a Especially lots and lots and lots of happy elephants from me, Ursula. And the Laureate Magpie and Elephant will all say goodbye.